Okay, let's have some fun going backwards. Here's the answer to a sharing problem. Some number of pies were shared equally among some number of students to yield this result. This is about a pie per student. My question is, how many pies? How many students? Well, you look at this, and I, I'm assuming my pictures draw sort of meant to be nice and symmetrical. This is meant to be five equal parts. You're seeing something divided into fifths, into five parts. So it makes you think there must have been five students involved. So let me draw five students. One, two, three, four, five. Great. And you also can't help think this is just one pie that got shared equally amongst five students. If you think about it, what would you physically do to share this equally amongst five students? Well, you take that one pie, divide to five equal parts, and make sure each individual student gets, well, one of those parts. One of those parts. That would do it. That, that's the picture. Each, that's the amount of pie per student. So this is, the, this is the sharing problem. One pie shared equally among five students, which we call one-fifth in the previous models. And there we are. We're actually identifying pictures now as solutions to our sharing problems, identifying pictures now as fractions. Great. Just as we're doing in the very first parts per whole type thinking in, the, in our early grades. Great. Um, but actually, let's have some fun with this. Let's keep going. Suppose I change the problem to this. Some number of pies were shared equally amongst some number of students to yield this result, this amount of pi per student. How many pies? How many students? We look at this and say, well, James, you just did three copies of one-fifth. I mean, we just did one-fifth here, so this must be three copies of what we just did. One pi yield one-fifth per student. Three copies of this would be three pies. In fact, if I really did share three pies equally amongst five students, what would I physically do? I'd probably chop this one into fifths, probably chop this one into fifths, probably chop this one into fifths, give one, one fifth to a student of this pie, give one fifth of this pie to a student, another copy there, and give one fifth of this pie to each student, another copy there. Oh, each student is getting three copies of one fifth. They're getting exactly this. This is the picture of sharing three pies equally amongst five students. Beautiful, and that really is three copies of one fifth. I mean, you even say in the same language as before. Grand. Then we really have fun with this. Um, let me do a more awkward picture. Here is the answer. Your challenge is to find the question. Uh, when some pies were shared equally amongst some students, uh, the result was that each individual student received one whole pie, and a second whole pie, and this amount of pie. How many pies, how many students, yield this result, this amount of pi per student. Okay, all right. We look at this and say, well, you can't help but notice fifths again here. I'm actually dividing into five equal parts. So I'm probably thinking five equal students, five students again. So let me draw five students. That seems the, the first good guess. There must be fives going on. So I'm sharing some pi equally amongst five students. And I'll get some amount of pi per student. But I should get this amount of pi per student. I get one whole pi, another whole pi, and a portion of pi. Beautiful. Getting a bit messy, but hopefully you're following me. Well, okay, so how many pies for those five students yield that result? Well, I guess I need one pie that will be divided into fifths, and each portion will go to each person. So that accounts for that. So one pie will count for that part of it. But each student also gets two whole pies. So what are the number of pies here? I'm going to make sure there's enough here to make sure this student gets two whole pies. There's two whole pies for that student. This student gets two whole pies as well. This student gets two whole pies. This student gets two whole pies. And this student gets two whole pies. So I think the number of pies I need is all that. That is really two whole pies per student plus a portion of pie for each student. Ah, bingo. That's what, 11 pies being shared equally among five students. Beautiful. Or if you like, you can see this actually is 11 copies of one fifth, because it really is, oh, 11 copies of one fifth. There it is. There's five copies and another five copies and one more copy is 11 copies of, of one fifth. So actually it's all hanging together beautifully. I kind of love this. Um, actually, if you want to be really clever, I haven't claimed that these are the only answers to these sharing problems. Here's the answer, what, what number of pies, what number of students gives that result. Because some people might be clever, and we'll, we'll get into this later on, but if you're one of those clever people want to think about it now, I could have actually thought of this as actually uh, tenths, and this is two copies of, of, of uh, one tenth. In which case, I might not be thinking five students anymore, maybe there's an answer involving 10 students, some number of pies being shared equally amongst 10 students. So maybe there's a second answer. Or maybe you're clever in a different way and come up with a third answer. Or maybe you're clever in a fourth way and come up with a fourth answer. Maybe there's more than one answer. But in this video, all I want is just at least one answer that works, and I can see for this, 11 pies should equally amongst, equally amongst five students does indeed give that result. Beautiful. In fact, you have lots of fun with this. 
Uh, so a little challenge for you. Um, so here is the answer to a sharing problem. And I want you to tell me the number of students and the number of pies. So I'm not going to draw round pies. Everyone draws round pies. It's actually easier to draw square pies. Here is the result of sharing some square pies equally amongst some students. Assume everything I'm drawing is meant to be equally sized. Bingo, bingo, bingo. All right. Some number of square pies were shared equally amongst some number of students. So that each student ended up with this amount of pie. That's the answer. What was the question? How many pies were there? How many students were there? And can you see, now I know from our early grades we say, oh, that's equally two parts out of nine, that's two ninths. But from the pie sharing, can you see this really is two pies being shared equally amongst nine students? The answer is yes, it is. Can you see it for yourself? Can you actually maybe draw a picture, draw two square pies and nine students and make sure that really is the amount per student? Beautiful. And if you're up for that one, then maybe try this one. Let's do a rectangular pie this time. Uh, can, here's the answer to a sharing problem. Some number of, oh, I'll make it even, no, no, this is good. All right, there's rectangular pi. Here's the answer. Here's the amount of pi each student end up with. So, how many pies were there to begin with and how many students were there? What sharing problem is that one? And can you play with it and see in your mind's eye that really is four pies being shared equally amongst 15 people? Can you see that? Try it out, think with it, because this will really sit with you. This is good stuff. Good stuff to really make sure it sits in your brain. And, um, and if you want the final challenge for today, here is the answer to a sharing problem. There's the answer. What was the question? How many pies shared equal amongst how many students yields this result of pi per student? Can you do it?